Hey, hey, everyone. Neelay Patel here. I am the owner, designer, and educator at Silver, Silk, and More. And I have got the fantastic, the talented, the incredible Miss Danielle Wicks with me. And Hi. Danielle is an expert designer, as I have said. But Danielle, this is like my first video with you, my first interaction. And I, I, I really think we just bridged our different connections that we've had throughout our beating experiences together right now. And a friendship has been forged. And I want to get to know all about you, how you started, what inspired you to get creative and started into beading, and then how you're affiliated with John Bead. I want to know all about you. And I know some of the Silkies here do too. So I'm going to give the mic over to you and I'm going to do some background sharing <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Neelay. That's quite the intro. Um, I'm Danielle Wicks and um, I am the content creator for John Bead. And so I do um, seed beads and I illustrate patterns. I also teach a weekly class for Michaels. So that's at um, 5 p.m. Central Time on Fridays. And it's uh, it's all seed bead classes. So if you like seed beads, that's a, a great place to come and join, you know, fellow seed beaders and learn a lot of great stuff. And so let's see um, how, how I got started. I got started with beading um, in, gosh, it goes back a while. Um, I've always been kind of drawn to artsy things. I've been a sewer and in, into crochet. I love doing crochet. But I got into beading um, in about 2007 or so, 2006, 2007. Um, through a friend who worked at a bead store in my town who taught me metal smithing and wire wrapping and fun things like that. And so it kind of grew from there. And then fast forward like through, I don't know, a decade and uh, I discovered seed beading. Once I discovered seed beading, I was just, I, I found my like true passion really. So yeah. Aww. That's, um, so I started out with, I started out with macrame actually. <laughs> Back oh, you in did? The day. I did. And then oh, I got cool. into seed beading, seed beading as well. Seed bead weaving. Oh, that's such a hard <laughs> term. Seed bead All weaving. Right. Um, and I think from there, it just like kind of blossomed for me of like, and I started out with like the crazy weaving with the free form and everything, peyote stitch and whatnot. Oh, and cool. then I think over time, my, my style has simplified <laughs> 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 because of also the vision issues too. So the less I'm able to see these days, but I still love dabbling in seed beads. So I was excited when you came up with this project for Silver Silk and, um, Thanks. you know, my, they're, they're, for me, there's always an underlying excitement for seed beads. And I know for a lot of folks out there, they're scared to go into that. They don't know oh. the investment required or what all they're able to accomplish. And I know there's a lot of folks that are obsessed with perfectionism and making sure that they get the technique down right and stuff. So I'm encouraging projects that are easy to learn for the beginner um, and then that are not intimidating at all to learn. And I think you've really hit the mark. Oh, thanks. Um, and I was just going to add on to that, that I am currently in the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group. Um, if you haven't, for those of you out there, you need to join because this is an exciting group of Silver Silk enthusiasts and creators that enjoy a sense of great community and share their designs and um, want to, I don't know, indulge in all of the things that are silver silk. And I, I, I'm i on there constantly. I'm, I'm always looking to see what people are doing and uh, try and share whatever I can. So the one thing that I do want to share is that for today's project, you wrote a pattern for. You wrote a pattern with illustrations and I'm going to share it to the silkies right now. Thanks. Yeah, it's a fun um, thing. Yeah, it was, it was very helpful. And I just appreciated that you took the time out to do that. <laughs> um, because it was very, it, it is a very robust um, process to do something like that. So yeah. But oh, do you okay. want to tell us a little bit about the project for today? Sure. Yeah. Um, and I find just, you know, with seed beating, it really helps to see an illustration because you're talking about thread, put this, put this thread through that bead going this direction, going, you, you lose people in one sentence, right? Mm -hmm. So you really need the picture. And once, once I was able to um, kind of bring my skills up to a level where I could show that in, you know, in a, in a pictorial format, it was game changing for 
people have gotten into seed beating that said they didn't like it before. I think what the, the best kept secret in seed beating is that it's actually super easy. People think it's hard, but it's not. It's easy. And I know my light's not great here, but this is probably the easiest of the three patterns. And it's the first one you'll see if you bring up the PDF. But all I did was I just did a simple little netted brick. Brick stitch is where you just anchor and then add beads and anchor into something. And I added the check leaves. So this is made with beads that are in your kit, your latest kit, Sunset in Tuscany, which yes. I have here. Just this one here. Mm -hmm. That'd be so the one. Beads from that one. And I pulled out those bicones for the other project and the rondelles for the other project, the second one that's in there. And I believe that's... That's it. And then I just brought in some seed beads. Yeah, Amazing. take it going. Amazing. I just shared it with our folks out there. So they've got the PDF. Ooh, yes. That is incredible. I mean, it looks so difficult, but I looked at the directions and and I can actually pan mm -hmm. down to your work surface if that'll make it easier. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll Let's bring do those that. Down. A little easier to Let's see a there. Solo layout. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, that's much better. So gorgeous. Love that. Bring this one over here. I love the way the silver silk just kind of like flows. Like it's just a, a way to make something look like water. There's a lot. Yeah, of it's got a great it. drape to it. And um, I, you were able to pull out something from it that I think is always a little bit overlooked, which is that you could sew through it. And here you've just mastered <laughs> a beautiful <laughs> design idea. And that's the one I was wearing. I just grabbed that one. This is my favorite. Um, I feel like it looks like a monarch butterfly to me just a little bit, but it, mm -hmm. it came out differently than I envisioned it originally where the loops are look a lot more rounded in my illustration, but I love how it came out. It just looks like a, I don't know, it just, it's, it's got a unique shape and it looks really cool on. So it's a definitely 100% unique piece. It is absolutely exquisite. And Thanks. so um, I actually chopped up some of the illustrations, but I was hoping that you would show us, well, you know what? Um, we can, why don't you show us one of them? I don't know okay. which one would be your preference. <laughs> yeah, so they're, um, the easiest one is this one. Okay. It's pretty fast. And then this one's not too bad either. And I have an in-process sample ready to go that I did on some silver chain that I could jump ah. to the hot part that has, you know, the, the next part, the next step that Perfect. in case we have time for that, I have it ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bead with you and I, I have some stuff picked out and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna add this to the stream, but I'm going to see if I can <laughs> toggle between um, doing some of the camera work here. So this is, I picked out, so I'm gonna start out with my chain, but you're gonna teach us. I'm just gonna show you guys my materials. But I thought, you know, Danielle sent me some seed beads from John Bead and I just, am, I'm, I don't know, I'm obsessed over mustard lately. And I still have some of those bicones as well. So this is going to be my working color palette. Um, and then I've got some size 11 turquoise. I think that kind of matches. So that's what I'm gonna be using, but let's pan over to Danielle and see what you've got in store for us. And I'm gonna try and beat along. That sounds great. I grabbed this gold. And actually, uh, if I'm going to show the leaves first, why don't I switch uh, over to the olive? I got the olive color that I'm holding here mm -hmm. from the Road to El Dorado kit. Ah, uh, yes. I still have some of those kits left, too. The Tuscany kit is all sold out. But uh, the Road to El Dorado, yeah, that's my really most pretty. sparkly kit to date. <laughs> There's fun stuff in there. And I just thought that that color was perfect. And I brought out these seed beads, which are like an earth color. Mm, yes, I have those. And then they, there's these really beautiful check glass leaves, which are from the Tuscany. Yes, kit. yes. So I do love that you can mix and match these um, and create something whole new with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to be using the leaves right now and some size 10 check seed beads. And I want to just shout out real quick, if you're using a size 10 check, that's great. If you want to use a size 11 Japanese bead, it's going to be perfect too. 
And then these are the leaves here. Just grab a few of those. And the thread that I'm using at the moment, I'm actually using some um, fire line because that's what I had handy. But you could use wildfire. You could use um, the good thread from John Bead. It has, has a really beautiful size D beading thread. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can use uh, that the sky is really the limit. So just go with what you like and what you have on hand. I actually am using uh, fire line myself today. Oh, you are? Well, perfect. Yeah. It's, I know Beetalon also has some different um, threads out, but I haven't dived into those quite yet. So, yeah, yeah they're, they're threads that I use the most. I use Wildfire and Nymo. They're both ah, pretty good. Awesome. And, and I cut, uh, wait, yeah. did we talk about your needle yet, or did we? Oh, we forgot. Yeah, I forgot oh, to yeah. tell you about the needles. Those are from Beetalon, and okay. they are um, a size 12 at the moment that I'm using. But you can use a 10 or an 11. Like the other day, I think in the handout, I put a size 11 tulip. That's what I had downstairs. Mm -hmm. But up in my teaching area, I'm using these. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I have that same packaging myself. I haven't um, dived into those either. I have some old, old, like, English beading needles. <laughs> They're probably fine. considered vintage now because I bought them, like, 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I think all of those would work. I used to, um, and a lot of people that I've talked to do the same, I used to just grab whatever needle was on my mat at the moment. And if yeah. I had a problem, then I'd go searching for something that worked better. Absolutely. But, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of my my lazy beater's way. And for the silver silk, um, both of those kits, they came with like double the amount I needed. And all I had to do was just find the midpoint, cut them in half, and I could get two necklaces out of it. So that's what I did here. I just cut it in half and then there's one side. And this was the other half that I had. And then I'm just bringing these ends together to find the midpoint. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna raise up just a little bit here so you guys can see what I'm doing. But I know I kind of want to make it just, you got to kind of plan out your design a little bit. And I wanted it just to sit like that. If that makes any sense. And you can do as many repeats as you want. But so that's how oh, I found yeah. my center. And that's how I know where to anchor to, where to start. Okay, that makes sense. I think that's a great, um, great way to lay it out just to see how um, long you want to make that center focal piece. And it's just totally, you know, up to you what you like. But um, so then the capture chain, and I'll have to get you to help me with this, Neela, to decide to what to call these. But would you call these links right here? I would call, I've, I've been calling them beads, um, personally, like the little beads that are in between or inside of the chain it's really just oh, a ball chain mm -hmm. it's ball chain inside the so the mesh on the outside has a structure to it where, oh okay the knit holes yeah yeah so i'm because i'm actually not going through the ball chain gotcha what i'm doing is i'm using Here. each of the places where that knit comes together to a point i'm using that as a place to go through with my needle i'm not actually going through the ball chain but uh here's like a side view of where i'm at I see. Yeah, you were going um, through a couple of the knits in there on the side. That's perfect. So I wasn't sure what to call those. I think in the handout, I just call them links, but they're. I just call, I mean, I call them knits. Knits, <laughs> knits and links, yeah. Yeah, just I like, like an, knits it's an open knit, essentially. And that's, so that's whenever I'm going through the, through the um, capture chain, whenever I'm going through it, that's where I'm going. I'm just going through that spot. And then whenever um, I, ca I can use it as a way to count so that my spacing looks the same. So if I want to just count four, I'd count one, two, three, and then I'd go like under the next one there. If that makes uh, any sense. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of how I've um, sort of worked with it in terms of sewing is that I just count out the different knits and then eventually land on the right one. It's a little bit um, because the knits are so wide and big, I guess, that there has to be a little bit of breathing room in between or, you know, a little, your design won't be super precise, but it will get you in the right spot. That kind yeah, of makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there's some, there's movement in them, but um, yes. the thread will automatically find its point where the, where the, um, the knit is tightest or those two strands, they look yes. like 28 gauge wire or smaller wherever mm -hmm. those come together, it tends to lock itself down in those spots. Mm -hmm. So I'm just tying a double knot. OK. 
Okay. My meeting thread here. It's just a regular double knot. And now what I'm going to do is just get some seed beads going. Oh, perfect. Okay. This is a mix that has a bunch of different colors in it, and I didn't really worry about what color. And I picked up three. I believe I did three, but it's up to you how many. Uh, with seed beading like this, you don't have to get caught up too much in the counts. Mm -hmm. It's just like what you like for your eye. And yeah, but don't you love that about Fireline, that it's sort of wiry so that you can really just pass it through the bead? <laughs> <laughs> pretty easily. Oh yeah, yeah. I should I should explain why I'm doing that. So I'm getting rid of my tail kind of. I'm just oh. hiding my tail. I'll uh -huh. trim that later because Got you know it. we have a knot down here, but you never want to cut beading thread right next to your knot. Oh yeah, no, that's a, that's a setup for a fail, a hard fail <laughs> later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all I did is I just brought that tail up and I'll I'll trim that at the end. And so I'm just gonna go through leaf now. Bring that up and then pick up three more beads. And so I counted four links for this design, but you could count as many as you like. And the way to figure out how many looks good to you is just lay it there, Ooh. bring it up and just take a look. Like, you could even decide, hey, I, I want to put more beads on there because it, you know, I want a different look, but I liked that. And so that's you kind may, of um, hold it a little close to the camera just for this first pass, just to see. Yeah, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. I just oh. wanted to see a little close up of it just to make it a little bit more um, obvious of where, where to pass through. So I think that that's really great. Yeah. And I feel like my camera's really dark today for some reason, even though it's bright in here. But um, there, that's a little better. Yeah. No, I think it's great. So you're gonna, it looks like you might be skipping like three of the knit holes and then going into the next one. Some of uh, our friends from Facebook, <laughs> Peggy says, oh, please don't call them knits. It brings images of knits to mind and my head starts itching. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I, the silkies, I'm telling you, we're a crazy bunch. <laughs> Lucy no, says you, looking though. good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. And then Suzanne Brown is saying hi, Silkies, and everyone. Thanks, guys, so much for joining in um, as we're learning a new technique and craft today. And please um, do share what questions you might have. And I'm getting it here on the back end so I can ask Danielle on your behalf. Ooh, so, okay, so you went through a couple of the knits and then you tightened your thread. Yep, and, and then I just what? kind of pulled it through. So it's still loose here. You can still you can still remove it if you want to, but I'm just, you know, auditioning it ah. just to see if I like it, and I do. Uh -huh. And so since I'm happy with its placement, I'm going to go ahead and come back up through the last bead that I added. We strung three after the leaf. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going through that last one there. Oh, okay, just the one. Fantastic. Yeah, for this design, that's kind of how it worked out. And so those little those little ones that are against the chain there, those have become those little anchor points. Okay, well, I'm gonna flash this graphic up for us because this is the this is the pattern from the PDF, by the way. And um, to acquire the written pattern and Danielle Wicks's beautiful illustrations, you will need to join the Facebook group, Silver Silk Silkies. And I just posted a link to it, but thank you, Danielle, for providing these illustrations um, for us and, I'll let you keep going. Oh, thanks. That looks really cool. I like how you did that. <laughs> well, you did that really. I just cropped it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool though. And yeah, it, it explains a lot better than, than, you know, this tiny visual I have here of like what the structure is like. So now we're just gonna do two more, you know, two more beads. Oh, right. That's just to make up for the count that's on the other side. So you're just mirroring, um, that same pattern yeah yeah and it's just that in the first one it's confusing because i strung three here mm -hmm. but it is really three on the side it's just each of these ones is sharing that anchor bead yes correct and so i'm picking up two more these are so tiny 
There's two more. And as I'm stitching into the chain, I'm having this thought of like, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a big deal if you went over the ball chain in the center too. You could, if you wanted to get it to line up just for extra strength, like especially if you were going to hang a heavier design than this, this is so light. Oh, I feel yeah. like it's really, and I don't think it's going to break, but um, if you were worried about that at all, you could absolutely here where I'm going through the, the knit, you could go ahead and just take your needle under the ball chain too and come out. So yeah, just something to think about. I'm just going through the knit though. Oh, and sorry, I um I did just make one little error there. I was going on about the counts and then I realized I should have picked up three there. So that's three beads. Sorry about that. And then count these four again. There's four. All right. Come back out through. And that's pretty much it. You just keep going. I'll do one more. Just two here. Because we're mirroring what's there. And now I need. And I had myself on mute this entire time. <laughs> Oh, you did? Oh. <laughs> yeah, my headphones died, and um, I guess it automatically needs. But um, we had a question from Eve, as, and she is asking, where can we find John Beads? Oh, they are at Michael's Craft Stores. You oh. can also find them on artbeads.com. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of these tubes here, um, for example, the one used in my other necklace, this, this came right from artbeads.com. Oh, fantastic. I love art beads. Yeah, me too. Their, their inspiration and tutorial pages um, were my uh, original seed bead inspiration. Ah. I just love all the projects that they do and their mixes are so cute. Yeah, they're pretty brilliant. I actually haven't met anyone in real life from there, but they used to distribute silver silk. Um, so I feel like I need to <laughs> get in touch with them again. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I bet mean, they don't I, know that I'm actually making it now. So <laughs> be like a, it'd be a long conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I hope you reach out. That's great. That, they're such nice people. I got to meet um, the owners when I was in Tucson. Oh, really? That's yeah. fantastic. And I want to meet Becky. I haven't gotten to meet her yet, but I got to do a Facebook with her. And she's really nice, too. And she does great designs. Oh, cool. Fellow seed beater. Well, that is looking fantastic. And yeah. it's it, you're just repeating like two steps over and over again. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just the same thing. And I just got to make sure I pay attention to my counts because sometimes I, I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> you know. It's impossible to do that while you're on a show with Neelay Patel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like it's just it's the live button. The live button makes my, um, my math skills go away. <laughs> For sure. And so, yeah, that's just, that's the whole thing. And then you would just go for as long as you wanted. You could go all the way around if you wanted to. I think I just did kind of like abbreviated versions. Oh, Lucy just posted the link to John Beat over on Facebook. Thanks, Lucy. I appreciate that. Thank you. Lucy is a diehard silky. Like if, if anyone is raising their hand to be involved in stuff, it is that lady. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and so um, that's pretty much it that, for that design. It's the same thing over and over, pretty easy. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. I so I have my project set out to do, I think the second one. Um, yes, that one. So I need a, I'm excited about this because I, I have no idea what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> that's how and it always one, goes. And you know, it, it's another one of those ones that it's, uh, it only looks complicated because um, uh, to explain a little bit, this had one pass, right? We just went one direction with our beads and then we were done. We weave mm -hmm. in and it's all set. This one has three passes, meaning you go this way, you come back, and then you go back one more time. Oh. Nice. But it's all just um, it's all just brick stitch. The same thing repeated uh, with just different beads in a different way. And it um, it comes together really fast because the, the beads are big. You're not working with little tinies. Um, you're working with the rondelles. 
that are, um, I believe I, they're about three by four millimeter. I measured them earlier. They're the ones that also that came inside of, of this kit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got those, um, especially, they were sort of a fun carnelian color. So I was like, you know, just had to, it all worked out color wise. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful color choices. I was excited about that. And I still have, for those of us that um, were interested in those kits, um, I don't have the Tuscany anyone, any, anyone anymore. You guys, I'm also enjoying a gin, uh, like a, what's a drink, a bee's knees behind the scenes here. So like, pardon the lack of <laughs> cohesion here, but- um, You're all good, <laughs> it's all good. What, I, what was I saying? I can't even remember now. I'm like, I'm trying to like really separate my materials at the moment, that's probably why I'm not talking very well. But uh, what I was saying is I still have a few kits of the others left. I've got El Dorado and I think I've got Serengeti, which was also a beautiful, like that one's probably one of my favorite ones. And um, if you're really wanting to like have an activity, especially during New Year's, you can link up with my workshop that is happening on December 31st. I'm so, so stoked about this. It was like a plan that just happened and it came together and we are doing five projects um, I think Teresa is in the background. Thank you, Teresa and Miss Gretchen, um, for helping out with some of the stuff happening in the background there. But let me flash a picture of this real quick. Oh, pretty. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I love that turquoise. Oh, it's the background. No wonder. Well, you see it there. It's the, the, part that's covered up is saying Stardust and Sparkles um, workshop. I'm going to pan back over to you, Danielle, because that's just bad. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I think I need to join your workshop. Can I join? I can join, right? Yes. Yeah. I would love for you to join. I'm I think that join. would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah I need to grab that kit when I log off here today. Um, you know, and I'll show, I'll flash some projects from the kit because I'm developing the last one, which is using epoxy clay. Have you used epoxy sculpt before? I haven't, I, I really wanna learn. Um, there's so many like new clay project ideas out now that I'm excited to try it. Yeah, I picked it up from Christine Friesen and I'm by no capacity of an expert like she is. She's just a, a, a godsend talent, um, I think. But you know, for those of us that wanna combine it with Silver Silk and the, the folks that are too intimidated to try it, like let me ease your your journey into this because I'm newbie. I'm a newbie at it too, but I think we could have a lot of fun with it. And so I packed in um, a couple of well, one color black epoxy uh, sculpt, and then I um, I'm also putting in some uh, mica powder with it too, so that we can really get some fun colors going. Well, that's <clears throat> neat. All right, so I am uh, I'm ready to be instructed. Okay. <laughs> So what I did really quick here is because I used up all my rondelles from your kit. So I grabbed some that were the same size from my bead stash. And uh -huh. again, those are about, I measured them with my calipers and my eyes said three, three by four millimeter, but don't quote me on that. Um, I think they're, I think they're about three by four millimeter. That would be my guess. And they seem, they really do uh, seem like they work really, really well with like a six millimeter bead, which is what this by count is. So I think that um, if you have beads like that in your stash or if you have this kit, then you've got it. Cool, cool. All right. And all we did um, for for the first part there was that same thing we did in the first um, design where I just tied a double knot into the knit right there. And then I brought mm -hmm. on a rondelle and brought it down. And I, I brought the tail through that rondelle. And I kind of pulled the working and tail threads apart to put my knot inside of my bead. Oh. And now I've got oh. another one coming down. Here's another rondelle coming down. And I'm going to just go, now this one, You'll have to feel it out, but for me, I found that just the next knit over worked. So I'm just gonna come up here, go underneath the next one. And when I pull tight, my rondelle will sit next to the first one. And ah, they kind of stack next to each other. That's awesome. Yeah, they're really, really easy to work with. Rondelles are flat um, on one side, so they sit really nicely on the capture chain. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was so pretty. 
I mean, even just that by itself, just throw a bunch of rondeau in there and you've got a beautiful necklace. Oh, that's fantastic. That gives me so many ideas now that I'm just looking at that. I didn't even know that that would happen when you stack these rondelles together. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then also like um, the design you did on, was it Tuesday? With the mustard seed beads where they, um, I'm looking at now, is there a way that I could get it to sit like that? Oh, oh that's right, yeah, for the roundup, um, we did just, we just tied them together, but yeah, that would that would be super cool. You could totally see that. You you might even end up, so if you wanted to let to lay that way, it'd probably be sewing through the capture chain. Oh, yeah. And then it's picking up the bead it. and then going back through the capture chain so that it's kind of threaded inside the capture chain. Maybe. That's so cool. I'm going to have to play with that and come up with something. Because I really I like that. I saw Tracy way. Proctor chime in. She says, hey, friends. Oh, hi, Tracy. Love Tracy from Tierra <laughs> Cast. She is so awesome. Such a nice human. Very creative. So I always love it whenever she has a few moments to come in and say hi. Tracy is inspiring. I love all of her designs. My friend Tammy says, I need 25 feet of some colors for silver silk and more. They are sold out. Tammy, send me an email, orders at silversilkonline.com and let me see what I can help you out with. <laughs> and Tracy says, let's see. Hi, you guys. Big hugs to both of you. Oh, let me see if I can do that. Aw, thanks, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. She's such a sweetie. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, my friend Rosalinda is in the house. She says, hello, Neely and Danielle. Hello to you, my sweet friend. Hi. Let's see. All right, so, okay, so it's my turn, right? Let's <laughs> <laughs> oh. see if I can be put to the test here. You've taught me your ways, Danielle, and I'm going to now replicate to the best of my ability. So I have um, this beautiful color called teal. It is a pearlesque chain, which means that it has two layers. Its um, first layer is the silver ball chain. And then when I peel this back, you'll see that there's a green tinsel that is a holographic rainbow tinsel that I um, knitted around the silver ball chain. And then knitted over all of that is seafoam blue. So when the colors vibrate off of each other, they create this beautiful teal color. Um, that's just a, an unbelievable, it's indescribable really, because the camera can only do so much. And I apologize for my grotesque nails because I was playing with epoxy clay earlier today and I didn't use any gloves because life's too short. So, Let's see, I'm going to go in a couple knits and then I kind of measured the center, but I'm going to go out in one direction just a little bit. I've got about eight rondelles to work with. So I'm going to sew through and then I just need to knot it here. A couple times. And then I'm going to string a rondelle, or I guess two. Yeah, you could do two or one. I think it, the, it's two when you start brick stitch, but for some reason I'm always throwing one on and then doing that little, yeah, yeah, like that. Okay. Perfect. Cool, and then I string another one on, and then I'm going to kind of like see where this lands and then kind of go through that ditch the knit, the open knits there. Oops, got my tail there a little twisted. That always happens to me too. Yeah, it just, it goes wherever you don't want it to go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, and then to come back out through just that rondelle so that these should stack accordingly. And I think I went a little too well, maybe I didn't. No, no I think I'm all right. Yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. So really what I would do is even just right there, my thread needs to go in somewhere over here. So I'm going to pull through and then go up 
through the rondelle. That's so cool. Ah, uh, yes. I think I'm going to get this. But it'd be really fun to make it spiral around the rope, like around the capture chain. Like, Ooh. There's just, with stitching, I think, there's just a number of possibilities that you can really, really get into a lot of trouble with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your brain would just travel to all kinds of places. Okay, so I'm only going to do eight, and then you're going to show me what to do after that, right? For sure, yeah. Sweet. I love the color of that capture chain. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's fun to experiment with colors because of the different types of knitting that can be done on the machine that I have. And I've noticed that before, whenever Silver Silk was just owned by different people, um, there was very limited color palettes and stuff available. And for me, my imagination is just way off the rails usually. And so I'm always thinking about different ways to do stuff that would be visually appealing and exciting and fun to use and using different colored tinsel to do a double layered knitting was definitely right up my alley. So I'm like constantly experimenting behind the scenes to see what all I can do to combine and recreate like new color, not even recreate, I guess just create new colors. Um, I had a, a friend here recently that asked me about a color that I used to carry called Envy, which was a silver ball chain that had, or was it maybe gunmetal that had green tinsel and black knitted over it. So it looked very spooky and Halloween-y. And I was like, oh man, I wish I would have thought of that like a couple months ago because I didn't even remember to like make my favorite colors for the season. Oh, cool. That sounds beautiful. I have so, to see okay. it. I think I'm all caught up with you. Yay! So I'm going to go back to your camera. Cool. And see, what I did just off camera there is I poured out um, some size 11. I'm now using a size 11 Japanese seed bead and a size 8 Japanese seed bead. These oh. are Miyuki. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some of the bicones that were in the Sunset and Tuscany kit. The little um, check glass bicones there. And so for the first, the first step of this, I'm going to just pick up two. So two size eights. And I'm just going under that first thread bridge. And if you've never done brick stitch before, what a thread bridge is, is it's just when we were sewing that first row where we anchored our, our rondelles onto the capture chain, a little bridge was formed above those beads, a little bridge of thread. And when I say going under the thread bridge, what I mean is we're just going to go underneath that and it catches it. Oh, okay. And then you just bring that up and you see how the beads will kind of sit next to each other and being careful not to go back under that bridge, just come up through that second bead that we added, just like we were doing with the rondelles. Oh. And then um, it's it's kind of a um, perfectionist thing on my part, but I often really, really want my first bead to sit flat. And so I'll go back down through my first bead. And I'll go under that thread bridge again. And then come up through that second bead again. If you find yourself being called to do that, there's one way to make it sit flat next to the next one before. Oh, that's an excellent tip. That one is, um, I'm going to save, saved me so many, you know, just perfectionist moments. Yeah, for sure. You definitely want to make sure this stuff lays flat too. So I totally understand. And it helps later with um, the back pass we're going to do with the 11s. It'll help it um, all kind of just flow. So that's another reason to, to look at that. And then just want to pick up um, a bicone and another size eight. Mm-hmm. And then just go through, you'll have to play with it a little bit, but I think it's either going to be the first or the second thread bridge. For me, it ended up being the second. That looked really good. Oh, okay. Yeah, that seems to sit pretty flat there. So that's perfect. I just want to come back up through the eight, size eight seed bead. 
And when you pull flat, just check it out and see if you like it. If you don't, you can always pull it out and go back or forward in your, um, you know, your thread bridges there. And then just grab another one of the bike cones. And another eight. And then go under the next thread bridge here. And so this is kind of a mini version. Yeah, a little like cute condensed pendant, if you will. I like that. And I, I liked the, the look of just, you know, keep going. All you would do is just, if you had a bigger one, you would just keep doing the same step all the way to the end. Gotcha. When you get to the end here, you'll have a side where, you know, you want the symmetry with the beginning. And so I just picked up another eight. Went under that same thread bridge again, because I'm out of... I'm out of thread bridges over here, but it'll work out. And then just tighten that down. And there you go. Ooh, excellent. Okay, so it looked like also in order for it to work out as well as the symmetry there is, having an odd amount of um, rondelles seems to probably work better, yes? You know, I never thought about it. I've, in theory, in my mind, think it would work either way, but let me count. Yeah, I've got nine here. For how, yeah, if you wanted to have a center point, then that's true. Yeah, you'd want to have a center point here. Like, you could even do a bigger bead here. Gotcha. Okay, so let me um, switch over to my camera, and I'm going to attempt <laughs> to um, repeat what you just did. So I had to take the one out, so now I've got the same like odd count as you. And so you picked, I'm gonna use mustard because I've been obsessed. Uh, mustard is like my new favorite for the fall. It wasn't last year and I don't know what changed, but something did. That color is beautiful. I, I oh, think it's, it's just that. Um, it's that new frosted, like frosted rainbow color. I was just gonna say the matte colors are like my, they're my jam. I, I just genuinely enjoyed them. Me too, yeah. Okay, so I stacked the two, went underneath and through the bridge, and then now you just do that same thing again, right, to make it lay flat? Yeah, you got it. Okay, so I went through there, and I'm going to go underneath the bridge again, and I'm going to go out, up through that second seed bead, and then I'm going to pick up a bicone and another mustard. And I'm going to skip a bridge and then go through this next one. Awesome, yeah. Cool, okay. And I'm going to string up through that. Now, did you do two seed beads or just one in between? So I would just pick up a bicone next, right? Yes, yeah, a bicone and then another size eight. Okay. You got it. And then let's see, I would skip one, go through this one. Let's see. I might actually be at odds here. I should have probably left that other one on because that's probably. <laughs> that's okay. Oh. You can always add it back on using your tail. Oh, that's true. Let's just do some surgery and see what happens. So, and I, I always say like, do you leave like a short tail or a long tail? Like what, what is your stance on a tail? Sometimes I'll leave it pretty long if, especially if I need to use it for something at the end. Sometimes you maybe want to put a clasp on with it or, but um, it's always just nice to have it and it makes it easier to weave into. Yes, especially inches, in this case. Seven or 10 inches is usually pretty good. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was uh, hoping you would give us a inch amount. So. Take note, people, seven to 10 inches. And I think it's also style. Like some of the um, designers I know, they leave a lot less from a lot more. And uh, the needle you're using can make a really big difference. For example, if you're working with a short needle versus a long needle, you mm -hmm. um, don't need to leave as big of a tail. Gotcha. That makes sense. 
I used to only work with um, uh, like a short sharp needle. That was just something that it was a throwback from however, whoever taught me first, I guess. And for the longest time, that was all, and I couldn't use the longer needles, but now I'm kind of more into the longer needles. Um, I think it's because there's something about them that makes it easier to very quickly pick up lots of beads. And it was probably looming that got me into those. Ah, uh, yes. I attempted a little bit and, you know, I've worked with um, Jules from uh, her oh, reading yeah. wings and yeah, I'm super talented, first of all, but also just, she's so much fun. Um, Jules Avalar, for those of you that I, I didn't make clear who it was, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's sort of where I got my um, taste of it, I guess. And she used capture chain actually in oh, her project and um, made such a beautiful bracelet design. I was just. Was it on the side? Like she loomed it as like the side of the. Um, the she side sandwiched of some beads in between two strands of capture chain. It was fantastic. Oh, wow. And I was about one to one of her button clasps. That. that is so neat. That is very, very cool. I need to try that now. Uh, Joan, Joan is on here, and Joan's one of my troublemaker silkies. <laughs> oh, hi, Joan. I like Joan. <laughs> we love Joan. Though. We we She's love Joan, cool. and we love Ginger. They're a hoot. Um, so thanks, Joan, <laughs> for joining in. And yes, Jules is pretty awesome. Yay. Yay, and Teresa says, love the color combinations. Oh, me too. That turquoise capture chain. Oh, my goodness. That's so pretty. Thank you. And so what I've got here are just, um, I've switched over to my size 11 seed beads here. I've picked up two. And I'm doing the same thing we did before, just with the smaller beads. So it's a little harder to see, sorry about that. But it's um, that same thing where I went under the thread bridge, coming up under out of the second bead. And with these little beads, I, I could go back and do that little turn to straighten it out, but it's already pretty good. So I'm just gonna um, Yeah, that. it's stacked up pretty easily there. Yeah, I feel like it did too. And so the next thing you want to do is get enough beads. And for us, I think it was either nine or 10 for our bicone. But you'll have to feel it out with your beads, whatever you're using, if you're not using the same beads we are. But I've got, let's see, how many do I have on here? There's five. There's nine. Let's see what nine looks like and how you would test it. Let's just bring it around your bead. And I think I want one more. I can't remember in the handout if I said nine or 10, it was one of those. Gotcha. And then, so I'm gonna go down through that size eight, the next one that's over the bicone. And I do think this would work with like, for example, like a six millimeter fire polish. I think this would work with that too. I could try really any, any bead. Ah, okay. And that loop looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to stick with it. I've gone down through that size 8 bead, and I'm going to pick up the thread bridge again. So you'll probably have, you know, two below that you can choose from. It doesn't matter which one. I just kind of went through the one that was easiest to see. And we'll come back up through the 8. And then it's going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to try to go through one of the 11s, just that last one right there. Oh, okay. Let me see. That's easy to see there. Yeah. Your camera, your camera kind of is so work. nice. I feel like mine is really, um, really dark. <laughs> but yeah, so now I'm just through that, that 11 there. And I'm going to pick up 10 more. There's one, two, three, four. There's 10. Same thing here. And go down through eight that's on the other side of my bicone. Pull tight. And borrowing that thread bridge again. And if you can't see your thread bridge, that happens to me once I get going with some of these pieces. It's, you know, it's hidden. You don't really have to see it to go under it. What you can do is just go between the beads. Oh, that's a good idea. And that really helps if you're working with something that's tight. Like This is starting to get a lot tighter than it was before. And now I'm going to do that same thing again, come up through, come up through the eight and then through the 11. I'm just going to tighten that really quick. 
and throw on one more 11. And this thing here at the end with these extra beads, that's just style. If you wanted to, you could go right into your loops. You don't have to do this. I just, I just liked it. So that's I like the symmetry of that. So I, I would probably do the same. Oh, you do? That's cool. Yeah. That's it. Brilliant. That's pretty much the entire design. It's just a very tiny version of this. Yeah. Okay. So my turn to put it to the test. <laughs> <laughs> We're beating. I, I usually don't do this like verbatim either. So it's it's very exciting for me um, to do this. So let's see if I can repeat what you just taught us. So I'm picking up two size 11 seed beads and mine is in a turquoise color. And so I'm going into that thread bridge. Or was I supposed to do that with the one? No, you did great. That's perfect. No, two. Okay. You have an amazing memory. <laughs> Just like I really don't though. That's what's surprising me <laughs> with all of this. I'm picturing in my head right now, you know, those um, like band competitions where they have someone play something on a like a guitar riff and then the other person has to play it back. Yes. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Oh gosh, how come that ha that ha that needs to be a thing in the bead world of like I just do this <laughs> and you do that too? <laughs> yeah, like one beater gets uh, I don't know twenty five seconds or a minute to do something with beads, and the other person watches it once and has to like and has to replicate. Oh gosh, yeah. are we coming up with a contest? Is that what we're doing? I feel yeah, like we're but I think if something. we did this contest, somebody would have to have like lots of wine present. Oh, you're truly <laughs> would definitely need that. <laughs> Okay, you said um, 10 seed beads, right? To string on 10? Yeah, but I wanted to make sure and uh, throw a disclaimer on there that it may look different. You, you know, just test it out by just oh, kind okay. of going, like looping over and seeing what you like. And 10 looks really good Ooh. in your design. That looks great. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stick with the 10 then. Sometimes and I go... forget what I did too, so it's like, <laughs> to go back. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go down through there and I'm going to pass through the rondelles because for me, that that seemed to be the winner of, of the thread bridge thing. And then I'm going to go through the eight and the size 11. And then, whoops. Oh, that did not get through that thread path. Oh, yeah, that happens to me a lot. Try that again. Which you can do if you're um, wanting to go through the, you could go through the other one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. You're good. I'm, I think I'm, I'm picking it up slowly. We got this. Helps like to have ideal, a coach. <laughs> ideal yeah. There we go. That's it. Okay. So that is my stitch there. So now I just do 10 more. One, two, three, let's see, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Okay. So now I'm going to go through this size eight between the bicones. And then I'm going to go through this set of rondelles. And then I'm going to basically just flip it around and then go through the size eight and one of those size 11s. Oh man, this is so easy now that I've got it. Well, you have some natural skill going there. Like I was watching when you, you had the tail kind of, you helped it with your thumb so that it would mm -hmm. catch under the rondelle. That's kind of like, you can't really teach people that. That's just, they just learn it as they go. You just automatically did it. Oh, thank you. I mean, some of I it is... I think you're a seed beater. <laughs> Welcome. I need to get back <laughs> into seed beating. That's really what it, it's like. It's a calling, right? It just yeah. should be a sign. Do some seed bead weaving. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so that's Go back through the one. I'm really focused, you guys. That's why I'm being so quiet right now. But me trust too. me, that gin has really set in. I'm actually really impressed. You're doing this with the gin. 
<laughs> okay, wait, I just needed to put the one on, didn't I? Because our, I've already got one there. Yeah, you got it. And that's that's pretty much it. Then you're just weaving in and you've got it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so exciting. Like, look at that, you guys. I did that. That's unbelievable. I mean, the colors I might go back and change, but I have the pattern down. And for me, that is like the most empowering thing today. <laughs> wow, I love let your me, colors. Um, actually. That's a perfect color combo. Let, while we're here, let me flash. So we looked at, let's, let's do a quick recap. Sure. We yeah. looked at stitching in the rondelles and the inner cord simulates either leather cord or it could be the capture chain. Mm -hmm. And um, you're just going through in and out of between each of those beads or within each of those beads. And then the second row is the addition of our um, seed beads, our size eight seed beads and our bicone um, or in this case, you've illustrated a, even a Czech glass, um, maybe six millimeter bead. Oh, yes. Yeah, I did a, um, a fire polish bead in there. Perfect. Um, very impressive illustrations. I must say, I've not seen any this good in a long time. <laughs> oh, thanks. And then this uh, shows you the row. For those of us that are on YouTube, this is sort of my way of giving, you know, the instructions. Because some of us don't want to join Facebook. I totally get it. Um, and so all you would do is just pause the video at this at this stage and you can um, find the tre the thread path through all these different beads with these illustrations. So let's put us, um, oh, did I remove your camera, Danielle? I'm, I'm wondering if it crashed actually, I watched it go off. I can try to get back in really quick. Unless, I don't know, was that, um, unless that was your demonstration. <laughs> I'm not sure what I did, to be honest. I, I broke something. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I think we're actually approaching the end of our class anyway, okay. so it's, it's yeah. probably a sign. <laughs> Let me that. see like, if there's it's any It's really questions. warm for some reason. Like, it's, like, really hot when I'm filming. Oh, so, yeah, mine does that, too. It's, like, yeah. burning up right now. I'm, I'm surprised it's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Joan says, wow, these graphics are awesome. Kudos to Danielle for putting that together for us. Well, thanks, Again, John. you can find the full instruction set on the Silkies Facebook group exclusively. Um, you won't find it even on the Silver Silk and More Business page. It's just for the Silkies and us. <laughs> oh, so Mimi is asking uh, my friend from Florida, do you POD stitch? I have before. I don't do it very often, but I can. I just need to figure out the right project. A couple, uh, well, a year ago, I did a class with Jill Wiseman, and you know she's a powerhouse with anything oh, yeah. she does. And so she taught the Silkies in our in a previous workshop um, how to do some really great beaded beads, and it was oh. just fun, so much fun to revisit that again. And she is incredibly talented too. We have like, I mean, she's a seed bead weaver by nature, and man. I can't even fathom the stuff that she can do too. We have some really talented people in this craft industry that we have a fortunate circumstance and I don't know, almost even a privilege to work with. For sure. She's on my list of people I would like to meet. <gasps> you haven't met Jill? I, I can totally met. if no I'm in Tucson and if she's in Tucson, we're gonna we're gonna go out for drinks. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I love I love me some Jill. She's an amazing person. Oh, so cool. All right, so I'm just panning through to see if there's any questions um, that you guys might have. And it looks like everyone is very complimentary of Danielle, of the project. Um, I think Thank Joan you, chimed in earlier. Let's see if I can bring her comment up. Maybe he's still on his first drink. That's, <laughs> that's, that's my Joni. <laughs> it's so um, well, anyway, I think that's all I had for the evening other than um, it was incredible to hang out with you for this short time. And I, I hope we get to do it again. I, I would love yeah. to do it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I've already got more ideas, so we'll have to 
I'll just have another class. And I'm going to make a quick little banner. What is the, what is your Etsy site? Oh yeah. The best way to find um, most of my content is actually just to go to my website. It's um, daniellewickstjewelry.com. And from there, you'll see a link to all of my patterns and tutorials. I have a bunch of free ones that are in that section. And then I have a link to my shop. And there's also a link to a bunch of inspiring patterns that aren't mine, but that have inspired my journey. I did a whole page dedicated to people. Tracy's the first one on there <laughs> of people who've inspired my work and links to their patterns that um, have inspired me. So it's a lot, a lot oh, of great fantastic. stuff to find there. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's a, a that's the place to find Miss Danielle for those of us Silkies who never met her, including myself until today. <laughs> and um just got to, we're just expanding out and broadening our skill set, our BD world, and just good vibes to everyone out there. And Danielle is in the same circle of friends that Sarah Lovecraft and Sam of Sam's Beads is in too. So <laughs> I think we're just going to all get together and cause even more trouble. And um, cheers to that. Oh, yes. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, Joan, I'm still on my first drink. I've got a whole <laughs> evening planned of cooking and stuff, so don't you worry. It's only four o'clock where I am, so I will mm. catch up. It's five, <laughs> but no, it's past five. It's six o'clock here, so we're well into our happy hour. <laughs> and anyway, it's five o'clock somewhere. Um, what else? Oh, guys, if you haven't joined up the workshop, um, you need to do that for New Year's. I'm doing a special, if you order your kit before um, October 9th, you can get free upgraded shipping and you can get a free spool of silver colored capture chain. This is gonna go a long ways for the project. So I don't want you to miss out or anything. So get those orders in and then um, we'll just party on New Year's Eve. I will wear a hat. I don't know what it's gonna be, whether it's a cowboy hat or if it's a New Year's Tiara, guess we'll see. <laughs> and Joan and Ginger will be there. <laughs> you know that's gonna be I'm gonna sign up too, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, oh yeah, my website. So you can find all of this on silversilkonline.com. And again, I just wanna thank Danielle for appearing and um, being a, mm -hmm. I think you're, you're a force in the industry, you have been. Um, your name's been tossed around everywhere, and it's it's so weird that we just now connected, but I also feel like it's the time is now that we should connect. So I'm just thankful that you were able to teach our Silkies a fantastic new technique that they can be inspired by and try on their own and um, leave me inspired as well because I've not done seed beating in a while, and it's always nice to dabble um, whenever I can. Yeah, I know you, you, you're a natural at it, so pretty cool. <laughs> well, I enjoyed beating with you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, Do you have anything else you want to let the Silkies know before we hang up the phone? <laughs> uh, just thank you. Thank you for um, your time and for um, all the great compliments on the project. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I definitely did too. So I'll post your project to the Silkies either late today or tomorrow and... Um, socialize the video so that they can recreate if they want to and get inspired cool. from this video. So again, thank you so much. And you guys out there in the virtual world on Facebook and YouTube, I hope you leave creative, inspired and empowered. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and we'll see you again at a future tutorial. Mwah. Giant hugs. I always like to give out big hugs in all caps to everyone out there. <laughs> See you guys.